Hello YouTube, this is Asatsu5 and I wanted to talk about uh, this knife. This was my carry today at work and there's going to be two parts to this one video. One is talking about kukuris, uh, Himalayan kukuris, and one is talking about neck knives. And I'm hoping to spend much less time talking about the kukri itself and more on my opinions of neck knives because I used to carry neck knives all the time and now that's not really the case. Um, and you're probably going to see a lot of videos of me wearing these clothes here in the future. Uh, I'll try to add different um, um, screenshots and stuff to, um, so you can tell um, that they're different videos. But I'm going to film a few, vi uh, several videos today, hopefully short subjected videos, and try to knock out some videos so I would have content on YouTube. But to get back on the subject matter, the story behind this knife. This is a my first Himalayan kukri. This was my first legitimate kukri, if you can call it that. Um, this is made in Nepal. It's hand forged, handmade, and it even has a little belt loop that I use to hang the chain on. And um, the chain actually goes lower, but I have a counterweight on the back of it so I can keep it in frame. But um, the story behind this is, this is a super awesome gift from my brother from when he went to Russia. And for those of you who don't know, you cannot take a knife on an airplane. And if you pack a good knife in your luggage, there's a chance you can lose your luggage or there's a chance that someone might steal it. TSA likes to take stuff out of luggage every now and then. Not saying they all do, but some, peop some TSA agents do. But... Um, Anyways, he, he didn't want to pack a knife to go to Russia, you know, um, so um, he bought me one of these and he bought himself one of these. But other than being super cool to buy me one for being a good brother, he bought himself one. So if the occasion occurred that he needed to defend himself in Russia, he would have a knife that he can throw in the river and walk away. <laughs> that was that was the joke, and uh, and uh, you know we so, some of us in the knife community talk about that. They'll be like, "Oh, this is you know a cheap gun that I can just throw in the river and walk away," or "This is a affordable knife. You know, I'm not too attached to it. If something bad happens, I can just you know throw it in the river and walk away." It's a, it's a joke that I've heard a few times, and I get a chuckle out of it. it has a little bit of truth to it, depending on your situation. But that's why he bought this knife, was so he would have something that he could defend himself when he was um, out of country. He was on a separate continent than uh, North America. He was uh, out abroad, and he wanted something that he could defend himself with. So that's the story behind this. This is mine. He has one that he doesn't do anything with. It's just a memento at this point. I have mine displayed in my lamp or I had it displayed in my lamp, and um, I was talking to my brother, and I was like, you know what, I want to enjoy that knife, I want to carry it, I want to I, I want to bring it back and put it into some use, and so I did. This is an actual Himalayan kukri. You know how I can tell this is an actual Himalayan kukri? Look how thick it is. <laughs> so uh, this is, uh, I guess, the second out of three parts to this one video. You'll notice that there was a lot of spine on this kukri. Also, keep in mind it has some scroll work, has some rust because it's high carbon steel. It's relatively soft steel because I guess it was heat treated in water. And it sharpens relatively easily. But my God, look at that grind. And it says, like, uh... Maka Mahalika, I can't say that. And if I remember correctly, this knife was uh, developed for cutting meat. You know, either as a steak knife or as a serving knife um, or a kitchen knife. It was, it was basically a uh, Himalayan, um, you know, kukri cook's knife. Um, I think it was actually made for cutting meat of some sort, but it was, uh, but it was. Himalayan inspired. Uh, but yeah, it's super thick. And this is the second part of the video where I talk about kukris in general. 
Uh, you know my opinion. I believe that KLOs can be just as legitimate as Himalayan kukris, and I feel that some Himalayan kukris are just as illegitimate as KLOs. And um, I posted a video a while back, um, Battle of the Kukris, and I got a lot of hate on that video. I talked about this in the past, and I've pretty much made my point pretty clear uh, in the past. And I plan on making another Battle of the Kukris video because I got a new KLO, and I want to get a antique kukri to show y'all the difference because I experienced an antique kukri at a gun show. I just didn't have the money at the time to buy it. But um, anyways, um, people, internet gorkas, people who call themselves gorkas but um, have no proof of it, um, were complaining that I was afraid of the kukri. I didn't know how to use it and stuff. Blah, 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 blah. I do know how to use a kukri. It's a knife. Knives are relatively simple unless you get into the martial aspect of it. Uh, or the crafting aspect of it. But um, simple use of a knife. I know how to use a knife. Um, and I explained the reason why I used the knife in the manner that I did. But... I kept on getting these internet gorkas saying that, you know, oh, you know, the kukri is the best knife ever, or it's, it can cut through anything, blah, 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 blah. And I asked them a very simple question. True or false? A thick knife doesn't cut as well as a thin blade. A thick blade doesn't cut as well as a thin, a thick blade doesn't cut as well as a thin blade. And I used the example of a straight razor. I said, between a axe and a straight razor, which one cuts with more ease? And they danced around this question. They did not want to answer this question. It was hilarious. Finally got one of them to admit it. And um, um, it, it was funny. But yeah, just keep in mind, um, just because something can cut and just because it's razor sharp, it doesn't mean that it's um, necessarily a better cutter. Both of these knives are razor sharp. At least this is... Super scary razor sharp because it's technically it is a literal razor. This technically shaves, but because this has kind of a terrible grind on it, it's not terrible uh, compared to some other kukris, but it it is very stout. Um, and I love it. Don't get me wrong, I love this kukri, but it is very thick. So when you're cutting into material, is this is creating resistance and. Um, it's just not going to cut as deeply with the same amount of pressure as this will cut. With the, If you use the same amount of pressure, this will cut deeper than this. Um, and this will cut with more ease. Now, the uh, Himalayan kukris do have the weight and momentum advantage, obviously, but that's not always what you're looking for. But yes, I love kukris. I even love this Himalayan kukri. I love my Himalayan kukri that I have right there, but... When it comes to KLOs, KLOs are just as legitimate, if not more legitimate, because they have a superior grind, and, uh, well, <laughs> they work. Uh, not to say these don't work, but uh, for the price, the KLOs generally work better than the um, Himalayan variety. And like I said, antique kookeries are a completely different animal. And I really want to buy one to show it off and to display and to do a battle of the kookeries with. I got a um, blackjack kookery that I want to do a battle of the kookeries with that to me more accurately represents an antique kookery than the um, Himalayan uh, imports variety. But I love this knife and I'm very thankful for my brother giving it to me. Now let's talk about neck knives in general. I used to carry neck knives a lot. Uh, I mean... A lot. Uh, my favorite neck knife um, is the uh, Cold Steel Spike series. I carry the Cold Steel Spike Tanto, the original Barry Dawson inspired uh, uh, Spike Tanto. And it was probably my third Cold Steel knife I ever bought. Had some issues with it, but um, it worked for what I wanted to use it for. But I never carried it right here on this chest region because I don't like to carry my uh, neck knives outside the short. I like them to be under the short, but the problem is um, bulky knives footprint. So how could I solve this problem? Well, basically I wore my neck knife underneath my armpit. I had some paracord and um, I, might, I might even did it with a steel bead chain because I was borderline anorexic at the time, but I carried the knife under my armpit. Keep in mind the knife 
is inverted so I could just pull it and use it. Why did I carry a neck knife? Well, I went on a lot of UIL field trips. I went on field trips in general. Some of these field trips included me going outside the city uh, that I was um, raised in. So I did not know what this situation was going to be like when I left um, my town. So I carried knives for self-defense. Uh, I, I generally carry a folding knife and I carried a uh, neck knife underneath my armpit. And so, uh, like, if someone needed to borrow a knife, I was not without a self-defense knife. Which was about, I'm going to say 70% of the population at my school carried a knife. You know, all the rednecks carried a knife. And some of the other non-rednecks did also carry knives. But, um, you know, you had some of the other more, uh, let's just say, goody two-shoe kids that did not carry knives. But they were not above asking to borrow your knife. So, um, I carried more than one knife, and one of them was a neck knife underneath my armpit. And uh, I could just lift up my shirt, grab it, pull, and use. And that's why I uh, carried a neck knife, and that's where I carried a neck knife. But in general, I don't like carrying my neck knife where it's visible. I don't like carrying it outside the shirt, inside the shirt where it footprints. I don't want people to know I have a, a neck knife. Um, why do I not like carrying it uh, outside the shirt? Well, it's very obvious. People can grab it and try to take it away from you. And uh, to me, that's just not good. Why do I not like wearing it underneath the shirt? I don't like it footprinting because it looks weird. I'm trying to be fashionable. And to me, having something that's bulging out of your uh, shirt uh, that's not your chest is problematic. It looks weird. But underneath the armpit, it worked out just fine. And um, two of my other favorite neck knives would be the Cold Steel Spike, the new variety of the Spike Bowie, the Bowie Spike, uh, the non-Barry Dawson inspired ones. The, my Barry Dawson uh, inspired uh, uh, Cold Steel Spike had a zero uh, grind on it, which is awesome. Um, and the new ones do not. But I love the uh, new buoy one. I like the new buoy one better than the old buoy one. And I like the old uh, Tanto one better than the new Tanto one. But I um, also like the uh, Bastinelli Mooncus, which I do not think the Mooncus is still in production. And my brother also had the Columbia River Knife until, um, what was it, um, Claw or, uh, no, Ringle 2. It's the Columbia River Ringle 2. And I really like the Columbia River Knife until Ringle 2 because it was hand. You could open up your hands and grab stuff and cut. And, you know, you had your hands free. It was awesome. And I don't know what he did with it, but I would really like that knife if he doesn't want it. Anywho, uh, that's my opinion of neck knives. Um, I think neck knives are cool, but they, they fit a certain role that I don't like. And that is, I like my neck knives to be big enough to do certain jobs, but I want them to be small enough where they're not conspicuous. And in general, when I carry a neck knife, a neck knife-sized knife, I'm carrying it sash carry. I'm carrying it with a static line, either in my waistband or in my pocket. I generally don't carry them on, um, around my neck. But the reason why I'm carrying this one behind, around my neck is because it is made out of wood, high carbon steel, and leather. And I don't want to sweat all over it. I don't want it to be up against my body while I'm sweating. I'm carrying this at work. And it just so happens that the kids are not at school, you know, it's summer vacation, so I don't have to worry about people looking at me weird uh, in general. So I don't mind wearing this outside the shirt because the students are no longer there. So uh, I want to carry this for a few days, enjoy it. I, I did get to cut some stuff with it, and it did a decent job. But yeah, that's my current carry as of right now. I carry this and my Venturian Ox Cadet today at work. And this was my primary cutter. So that's it. I'm a Satsu 5. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'm out.